Today's video is sponsored by Ranting Jess, aka me, because I have some things to say. Hello again team, it's Jess or Jashi Karin, and welcome back from my week 31 plan with me. In today's video, I'm going to be setting up for the 29th through to the 4th of August. But before we get into that, as per usual, we're going to have a look at how this week is going. So as you'll remember from my last plan with me video, last week's challenge was to do a 5 minute weekly spread. And for those of you with a keen eye, you'll probably notice that this is a little bit different to what we finished with last time. So since completing the 5 minute spread, I went and added a title at the top of the page, and I also did some small outlines around the outside of the circles for each of my days of the week. I just felt like it didn't quite look finished, and it was kind of bothering me, so during the week I just went in and touched that up. All in all though, I have been enjoying using this spread, it's given me a good amount of room to write down my tasks, probably not quite enough though. I found that I haven't really had quite enough space, so in setting up for this week I know that's something that I wanted to focus on. Just having a look through this one though, and be warned, I'm going to go on a little bit of a rant here. If you don't want to listen to it, there is a timestamp up in the corner there. You can go to that section of the video and that will be me actually starting the setup for the coming week. For those of you who didn't skip ahead though, on Monday I drove my partner to work, came home, and when I got home there were painters parked in like my spot. I know that sounds dumb, but yeah, it's where we park our car. So I got down the bottom, had to ask them to move, big kerfuffle with that. Thus I wrote down this note, should have a collection for how many times I've come home to someone parked in my spot. I've talked about it before, but we have an adjoining property on our one and we're part of this two unit body corporate essentially, which means that any work that gets done to the outside of the properties or to any of the shared areas is supposed to be signed off by both parties. You can probably tell where this is going by that comment because next door is getting their roof and walls painted on the outside but we have adjoining walls, so if the paint doesn't match up for the walls, that's kind of an issue, because then we'll have this weird line where the paint doesn't match. Anyways, so that started the whole kerfuffle this week of trying to get in contact with our neighbor, who doesn't actually live there, trying to check in to say like, hey, why are you getting stuff painted when we never decided on getting stuff painted? You may remember back in like February where I talked about the decking issue, and how she went ahead with getting our car deck completely redone without actually getting us to sign off on it, so it's like a recurring problem now. Yay! The real issue with it was though, is that the painters drilled an anchor point into the wood that lines our roof. So not her roof, our roof, like our property. Which is an issue because obviously she's the one who's getting the work done, which means if anything goes wrong with that, we don't actually have a way to hit them up and say, look, you damaged our property, we want compensation for that. So yeah, more kerfuffling with that, which is super cool. <laughs> Anyways, so that was the first problem for the week. The second problem for the week, well, it's not really a problem, but it's something that's happening. Anyways, last week I went to my doctor to get my blood work done because I have to. I don't know, I'm an adult now, so... You're supposed to do that? Anyways, whatever. So, got my blood work done, got a call from my doctor on Monday saying like, Hey, here are all the things that's wrong with your blood work. <laughs> so he said that I should really be going to get an ultrasound just to check out everything down there and, and making sure that everything is dandy. But I don't have health insurance because, I don't know, the health system's really not that bad in New Zealand, so... Didn't really feel the need to get it. I still don't feel the need to get it. That's not really what I'm complaining about here. But anyways, so I'm getting an ultrasound on the 6th of August, and that's going to cost me $253. So that's dandy as well. Dandy, I like that word. I just think it's kind of annoying because now we're probably going to have to pay for painters to paint the outside of our walls, which we weren't really planning on doing, which is going to cost a couple thousand. And then I also have to pay for this ultrasound. And I'm just like, why are all the bills coming in once? And mm -hmm. Anyway, then on Wednesday, I got one of those save yourself emails, the ones that like have your password in it. And for those of you who don't know, it's like this phishing scheme or whatever, where somebody has gotten your password off one of those like hacked website database things. And they send it to you saying like, hey, I know your password is blah, blah, blah. If you don't send me this much money in bitcoins, then I'm going to release videos that I've hacked through your computer and something and whatever else. And <laughs> So then Wednesday morning I got to spend installing like spyware to make sure that 
everything on my computer was fine. There's no Trojans or anything. So I'm like, yeah, okay, sure, whatever. But that leads me to the point of what I would recommend anybody who's watching do is just to make sure that you haven't missed any possible security breaches for the passwords on accounts that you've been using. General recommendation would be heading over to haveibeenporn.com and this just checks your email address against any of the hacked databases that there are for any websites out there. I'm probably explaining it badly, but general recommendation, go do it. It shows you which of your accounts have been compromised. I found that my email address featured on three of those, but it's just good to know which of your passwords might be floating around out there. With the save yourself email in particular though, from what I could find on the internet, this isn't actually an issue where people are getting into anybody's accounts or anything using their passwords. It's more just they're trying to use scare tactics to get people to send them money for, for them to not release videos that they don't actually have or something like that. Anyway, in slightly better news though, I'm probably going to be hosting an Instagram giveaway pretty soon. I recently reached 30k subscribers over there, so I am going to be hosting a giveaway probably at the start of August. If you're not following me over there, then you're probably going to miss out, so go follow me. Or don't, I'm not your manager or your mother. And lastly, I'd like to give a big thank you to Purani, who let me know that I was featured in Plant Based Bride's most recent video, where she looked at extra spreads on Instagram and reacted to them. Which leads me to my question for the day. Do you think my spreads are extra? <laughs> There's a little poll up in the corner. I'd love to know what you think. I personally didn't think mine were too extra. I like to try and make spreads that are pretty achievable for most people. But I always love to hear your thoughts, so let me know. And now welcome back to anybody who skipped the rant, and we are going to jump into setting up for next week. So the challenge I have for this coming week is a recreation of a spread that I've already done. So to find inspiration for that, I pulled out my first bullet journal and had a look at the layouts that I was using then. So we're going to push this one to the side and have a look. So I found that one of the most common layouts that I used in my first journal was this kind of a thing, where I had a list of the days of the week down the side here as a space to write down my events, and then something on this page. So I'll show you what I mean. So this is the one for February 6th to 12th. If we flip over to the next one, you can see that February 13th to 19th has a very similar layout for this page, but then on this one it has a folded Dutch door with a running to-do list for each day. And then on the back side here, we have, a, again, another something. We have another similar thing here. So again, pretty much all laid out the same. For this one, I accidentally put the washi tape in the wrong place and had to write the title down the bottom. But again, we have the folded Dutch door, which has something on the back. This one, I included a timetable, running to-do list, a couple of notes about what was coming up, and then whether I'd done my chores. For the next one, again, Similar thing with the washi tape, Dutch door, and then on the other side, because I hadn't really used anything for this, I put another week. For the next one, similar again, layout here. Kind of like a Dutch door, but then again on this one I put some different things. So I had my running to-do list for this, which got the shit I need to do this week. And then this was the time I was doing Shave for a Cure, so I was using this as a tracker for my sponsors. For the next one, again, events list, things that need to get done, and events list, timetable, things that need to get done. So I'm going with that kind of a layout. Flipping back through this one, I am yet again reminded of how bad the ghosting and bleeding was in the LT1917. I'm really glad I don't use that journal anymore. I know it doesn't bother some people, but it for sure bothers me. And then this one I didn't use the washi tape, but I still have similar layout again. So space for events, Dutch door. And this one again, I had the week on the back because I hadn't used any of this space. So you can see I didn't really use this. I think I was on holiday at the time. Anyway, so that's the type of layout I'm going to be doing for this week coming. So I'm going to put this one to the side, just have it open as a reference, and get stuck into our spread. To start this one off, just like we had with those last spreads, I'm running some thin washi tape along the top and the bottom of each page on either side of the Dutch door. 
For this spread I've decided to go with a blue colour palette, just because I feel like I haven't used a lot of blue in the past couple weeks. Now I know that last week the washi tape was a mistake because it took way too long to put it down straight, but this week I'm not doing a time trial, so I can take as long as I want. <laughs> For the folded Dutch door, I ran some washi tape along the fold on both sides of the page. This just allows the fold to be a little bit more secure, and it means that the page is going to be a little bit more sturdy along that fold. As you guys may well know, folding paper back and forth along one area repeatedly can really weaken the paper, so I'm using that washi tape just to make sure that that area can withstand the repeated folding. To make sure that each column of my Dutch door was equal on both sides, I ran the washi tape directly down the centre of the dots for the page. This did mean that I needed to trim some of the edge of the page off just to let it fold neatly into the crease of the book. For the rest of the main structure of the setup, I'm just using my Tombow jaw brush marker, first the bullet end to do all of the ruled lines, and then I go in with the brush tip to do any of the block colouring. In terms of questions from last week's video, and again thank you to all of you who do ask questions, it's nice to talk about the things that you guys are actually interested in. So our first question came from Purani, who asked, what is your favourite food at the moment? Well, I wouldn't say it's just at the moment, but my favourite food of all time would have to be sushi. I will always go for sushi. If sushi is an option for a meal, I am there for it. <laughs> always. Second favourite? Donuts. <laughs> Though donuts are probably a tie with cereal and pasta carbonara. Like, anything carby. Oh, bread. Bread is so good. At this point I was paying a little bit too much attention to my reference material, so when it came to writing down the month, I accidentally wrote down 02 instead of 07. <laughs> oh, whoops. Oh, whatever, it doesn't matter. Um... <laughs> As I've talked about previously, sometimes fixing a mistake draws more attention to it than just leaving it alone would have. Sorry about that interlude team, I just had my next door neighbour's father come over and tell me that I'm being petty for holding up their paintwork. <laughs> I'm so sorry that I want things done legally, oh my god. Anyways, back to setting up. Our second question comes from Catherine Smith who asked, do your students know you're on YouTube and if so, do you know if any of them follow your channel? A fair few of them know I have a channel, and some of them I believe are subscribers. I'm not sure how many of them actually watch my videos though, so if you're one of my students and you're watching, hello, I hope you're having a great holiday, and I'll see you next week. I know that the students in my senior chemistry class know about my channel, because I've made videos for them for some of the topics that we're learning. They're on my channel, but they're unlisted, so you guys don't get all these random notifications about chemistry videos. <laughs> But of course, when they watch those videos, YouTube will recommend other videos that I've made to them, which are more of my bullet journaling stuff. Alrighty, so we have a section for each day of the week for my events list, a space for my to-do lists for each day, a notes and to-do section for the week, and then my school timetable. What I'm going to do now, of course, is go and write in my events that I know I have coming up next week. As usual, just using my pit artist pen. Our third question comes from Daphne who asked, have you ever considered bullet journaling on an iPad or using an app or something like that? So I'm going to use the term considered very loosely here. I thought about it a couple of times, very, very briefly, and decided I really just like the feel of pen and paper. I find that the act of having to physically write something down rather than type it out helps me remember things a lot better and I enjoy the satisfaction of physically ticking things off a checklist. I have used digital to-do lists before, and although they work perfectly fine, I personally prefer to have mine handwritten. I'd also like to thank everybody who stuck around and listened to my ranting at the start of this video. It's not necessarily something that I want to put into every video, but if you guys were interested in finding out a little bit more about what's happening with me outside of just journaling, please let me know your thoughts either in the comments below or vote on the other poll that I have in the cards at the top, just to share your thoughts about me ranting in my videos a little bit. 
Thank you for watching. If you liked today's video, feel free to go check out another one. Until next time, bye!